also had a question with regards to I want to buy a car and so I go to the bank and the bank Islamic bank and I say to them I need money to buy a car they say no giving you money and you buy a car and you pay us more that's haram that's riba okay so then the Islamic bank says that you know what what we will do is we will buy the car we the bank we will buy the car we will become the owners of the car the car is our car we bought it for a hundred thousand rupees after we buy it we take ownership of it we become the owner then we will sell it to you Zishan for two hundred thousand Jayid so they bought it for a hundred thousand and they sell it to Zishan for two hundred is that allowed Zishan? Yes. Yes. Zishan huh? Liar, uh -huh. he's a liar, <laughs> liar. Zishan, allowed? Yes, that's allowed, Jayid. That is allowed. It's called murabaha. Jayid, the Arabic term for it is murabaha transaction where you're making a ribh, you're making a profit on it, Jayid. That's what usually businessmen do. Someone wants to buy a car, someone wants to buy a fridge, so he goes, he buys a fridge, puts it in his shop there, puts a markup, and sells it, yes or no? He knows there's a market for it, so he buys it. If there was no market for it, would he buy it? No, he wouldn't buy it. So he buys it and then he's taken risk. Yes or no? Yes. He's taken risk. That's why the bank can make a profit. He's taken a risk now that he's become the owner of it and then he can sell it to whoever on installment sale over a period of time and he can make a profit on that. The only issues are, for example, if the bank sells you the car before they buy it. They haven't bought the car yet. They sell the car to you before they even bought it. Then it's going to enter into the mas'ala where we already discussed, Dr. Ahmed Saeed. You're not allowed to sell something that you don't own. I go outside there and I'm selling you, car. not my car that. There, I would be making a profit on something which wasn't at risk. Yes or no? Yes, nothing on risk. I put nothing on risk. Jayid. So that would be that would be illegal, that would be impermissible. So then what some of the banks do is that they say, no, 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 no. Uh, we won't sell you the car before we buy it, but we want you to promise us that you will buy it from us. Because I mean, we don't want to buy a car uh, and then after that you don't buy it from us. Jayid, that's the problem. So they say, you promise us. So I promise, no problem. I can promise. But then they say, no, but you see now, promise we can't hold you liable. You know, we can't hold you accountable so we call this a binding promise huh? call it a binding promise so we ask them what's the difference between a binding promise and a sale it's the same thing Jayid. so that's a problem if it's just a promise you know uh, under normal circumstances if we buy the car you will buy it from us no problem and technically rare would it be a case that you wouldn't buy it you really want to buy it right but the point is to make the transaction permissible they must buy it then they sell it to you right if they sell it to you before it's impermissible if they ask from you a promise which is binding then that's a that's a contract that's like as if they sold it to you. It's just a different word, right? So that is a problem. Uh also what the bank can do is to make sure that you don't default to make sure that you know they're going to get their money etc what they can do is uh, that uh, that car which was purchased the log book they can keep it as a surety as a deposit and so if you don't make payment maybe three payments in a row you miss or something then they can take the log book and they can impound the car they can sell it get back their money and whatever you've paid you know whatever they owe you etc they give it back to you for him too